Hank Splunk Analytic for Hadoop. Hank index, analyze, and visualize Hadoop data on the fly. Hank virtual indexes allows Splunk to index and process Hadoop data at each data node. In addition, Splunk automatically creates schema on the fly, and there is no need for Brito schema. The end result is fast implementation and high degree of flexibility for Hadoop projects. During the runtime, Hank will copy the search results that you typed in the Splunk UI into Hadoop. It will then transform that Splunk search into Hadoop MapReduce streaming job. After each map phase, Splunk will copy the intermediate result into a local data node directory. It will then index it and then the Splunk search head will pull the results from all the data nodes and will do the reduction and basically the reduced phase of Hadoop will be done by the Splunk search head and will give us the intermediate results until the map, all the maps have finished their processing and the full result will be displayed in Splunk. For this Hunk demo, we're going to see how Hunk index, analyze, and visualize two Hadoop data sources. The first data source is stored in a directory, in a Hadoop directory called User Anon National Energy. It's a fairly large XML file. The second one is a, a little bit smaller and it's stored in User Anon Daily Energy uh, directory. The, just to, to see an example of what the National Energy XML file looks like, it basically is a XML that is broken by rows and will give us a information that was gathered in 2005 about the United States uh, energy consumption. To set up virtual indexes on top of the two Hadoop directories that we have for this demo, you can go into System, and under the Data section, you will see a Virtual Indexes link. Clicking on the Virtual Indexes link, you see two subtabs. The first one is the Providers, the second one is the Virtual Indexes. The Providers give us the ability to configure the connection and the basic setup for the Hadoop cluster. And the virtual indexes allows us to point to a specific Hadoop directory that we want to index. Looking at an example that I created for this demo, the My Hadoop Provider, we see the basic configuration for Java for Hadoop, the location of the job tracker, and the name node. In addition to that, we can also see the Splunk settings. The Splunk settings our requirements since Splunk is going to be installed on each data node. So for example, we need the Splunk directory on the data node, the location for that directory. The HDFS working directory is the location where after each map phase, uh, Splunk will pull the data from this particular directory by the search head, as well as the Splunk software itself that's going to be installed at the above directory. Uh, furthermore, you can tell Splunk to automatically set up its software on all the data nodes, or you can do it yourself. And there is a few other settings. For example, the uh, Splunk MR.jar file is the actual file that will translate the Splunk search into Hadoop streaming MapReduce, as well as the ability to set up a garbage collection and many other um, elements of this environment. Looking at the virtual indexes subtab, we can see an example of the Hadoop underscore national energy index. And when we set it up, we see that we have to point to the Hadoop directory where the data resides, as well as the type of files we want to pull from that. And we can set up additional customized time format, timestamp format that we can set up so that when Splunk pulls this data, it gives us a, some sort of a, a timestamp if we wish to do that. 
uh, one more element that we can set can be done in a file called uh, props.conf and in this case since I have the daily energy and the national energy I set up additional parameters for each one of those for example in the national energy a Hadoop directory I told Splunk that this is an XML file and to break the XML after each row as well as to set up the key value mode to an XML and so that whenever we display it in Splunk we have that all set up for um, uh, indexing and uh, analyzing and visualizing. Once the virtual indexes have been created all we have to do is to go to the Splunk search command and call the indexes that we created a minute ago. Splunk then will go to the Hadoop directories and bring us the result from that particular directory. It will index all of the data, it will break all of the key value pairs and we'll put it on the left side and allows us to go in and create any visualization on the fly from that uh, key value pairs as well as we can go into Splunk and type uh, any Splunk commands, for example, stats count by um, a row a age of the uh, air conditioning in my house. I can go in and invoke that search. Splunk will go in and add that additional information to the search and stream the result to Splunk. And we can see as Splunk goes into Hadoop, it goes in and starts bringing the result as they are produced by the map produced by the Hadoop map produced, we can see the result in a tabular format, or we can see the visualization get updated by Splunk as the events are getting streamed in from Hadoop. Additionally, we can see the actual details of the map produced that was running on the Hadoop side. So looking at a uh, search that I created for this demo called the national average of kilowatts per square feet and we're going to run it in a Splunk smart mode. Um, as soon as the job started running, it's going to, as we mentioned earlier, it's going to convert this search, the Splunk search, into Hadoop MapReduce job. Therefore, looking at the details in Hadoop, we can see the actual uh, map and reduce that we generated based on this Splunk search. So we're going to give it a few seconds to, to run and to get the result streamed into Splunk. And as the job is running, we can look at two things. First of all, we can look at the Hadoop user interface and we can see the progress of the job in the job tracker user interface, the Hadoop job tracker user interface, and the job has a specific ID that was generated, so as soon as it's done, we can refresh this user interface and see the results of the job that we just executed. Looking at this particular job, we can see that Splunk actually generated two maps, but as we mentioned earlier, since Splunk is the reduce phase, you'll see zero, re, zero, zero reduce um, uh, JVMs running. Also, you can see other elements of this particular job and a few other graphs that uh, the job tracker generated. Uh, furthermore, if we look at the Splunk UI itself, underneath the job and we can inspect the job itself we if we go all the way to the bottom of this uh, display we have the search log which will give us the actual details of the job the ID that Splunk generated. To get additional information about Hunk go to Splunk.com and underneath the solutions area you'll see a link to the Hunk beta. Click on that. It will take you to the page where you gain additional information about the product 
as well as the ability to sign up for the beta itself. Uh, furthermore, if you go to blogs.splunk.com and in the search area type Hadoop, you will see a link to several additional and new blogs about the subject. To summarize, Hunk is a new product offering from Splunk. It is currently in beta. It allows the exploration, analytics, and visualization of Hadoop data without the need for that data to leave the Hadoop ecosystem. All the processing and all the indexing will be done without a single line of code from the user. Splunk will translate the query language to a Hadoop MapReduce and the users can benefit from the Splunk ease of use and the Hadoop processing power. Thank you.